like I've finally bitten the bullet here. Um, if you remember from the engine test video on the test stone, this plug was leaking. I tried all sorts of things to sort it out. Some plugs seal down flat with a, like a crush washer, some have a bevel. Um, it basically the surface is irregular there, so it's not going to work. And the thread is on the edge of pulling out all the time. So um, I'm going to take the head off and take it to my favourite engineering company and see if they can do something with it. I do have a spare head. So what I've done is I've gone around slowly undoing these in like a sort of spiral inwards. Just a tiny bit, tiny bit, all the way around, a bit looser, all the way around, a bit looser, a bit looser. They're all loose now. This socket is a, what is it, 11 sixteenths. Some of the nuts are a bit chewed up, just a couple of them. So for that, I'm using a spanner that's slightly bigger. It's actually metric 18. This one is being a problem, but... Um, you can get the metric 18 on there reasonably well. I mean, if it was mega insanely tight, it might round off, but I'm lucky <coughs> it's loosened off, okay? Well, you see the 11 16th won't, it won't really go on that one, but it'll go on all the others, no problem. So I'm using the long bar just so I don't kind of lean, put all the forces to the side or anything, just straight on, and then I just lean into it and slowly release it. So these are all loose now. So I'll stop the I'll take these off. Just stop the camera while I do that, and then we'll see if the head comes off easily or whether it's going to be a total nightmare. So they're all finger they're all loosened up now. I just need one turn to come off. And I'll just show you this one. This is quite interesting. If you look at that. That hole is way off center in that nut i know ford made everything in house but look at that it's like totally lopsided nut obviously it was maybe it was a friday afternoon and everybody wanted to go home i might be in luck i just got a bit of wood there's a slight the head overhangs the block just by a couple of millimeters here the sound of the ambulance. I live on the main road to a hospital where I used to work, so there's ambulances, there's air ambulances flying over, you know, all sorts of things. Anyway, if I put this bit of wood under there, if you watch this carefully, it moves when it hits it just a bit. I don't know if you can see that, but you can just see it move a touch. That tells me that it's not seized on at least I'll try doing something similar this end yeah I've seen people just put a pry bar here in here and go but I really don't want to do that I'd rather just take my time some people put um I've seen they screw something into the plug holes and pull on the plug holes. Um, I don't have anything with the correct edge for that. Um, right, well, this this works. Um, these are wire brushes I use for aluminium welding, and this, the handles are quite hard wood. So I've just cut a bevel on the end to a point and just tapped it in. You can see it's lifting off the head. Same this side. So the thing to do is take it slow and be patient.
my cylinder heads come back so check this out so eight seven six five what's different something different here um if you remember my earlier videos some plug designs have a like a a beveled ceiling edge as it screws in some of them are flat and they have a crush washer the champion ones these these are one of these AC Delco or something. Anyway, the Champion ones have the flat cross washer, which is probably easier when you're trying to machine things. So, um, if you remember, it wasn't sealing; it was really damaged, corroded. I had blow by. You could see in the engine test video a little puff of smoke coming out here with each uh, each ignition. So, um, it's made me an insert. Look, it's stainless steel. If we go on the underside. Trying to break the plugs. There. You can see it. So that's a normal one. And um, the plugs are 18 millimeters in diameter, which is an interesting considering this was made in, in the US. You'd think everything would be uh, imperial. But anyway, they're 18 millimeters diameter. That's to the outside of the threads. And this insert is 22 millimeters diameter to the outsides of the threads. So um, he charged me 20 pounds for that job, which I think is bargain of the century, to be honest, if it works. Um, so this is all pretty dirty, needs a good clean. So once I finish the front end, then my next job is clean all this, same on the engine. Put my nice, nice new copper gasket in and get it bolted on again. So I've got hard plastic paint scrapers. Um, well, they're not that hard, so you can bend them. Not metal, so I've got a load of them and it shouldn't damage the metal surface. I've got some chemical resistant gloves and I've got goo gone. I think. The American equivalent is goof off, but I couldn't get that. It's been recommended. It's, uh, well, as it says, goo and adhesive remover. So that might work. Uh, some red scotch white pads and some shaving foam. All will become clear in a minute. This is uh, shaving foam. Right, I've seen it recommended as a way of blocking off the smaller water ports because you can basically use the shop vac at the end if you get little flakes of gunge in the holes you can you can basically vacuum it all out with the shop vac i think the bigger ones i might still use basically just splurge it with shaving foam Bigger ones I might pack with, with uh, paper. Let's have a go. Or a mixture of paper and shaving foam. Well, it smells nice anyway. You've got to use foam, not not gel, not shaving gel, shaving foam. Let me pack that. I don't want to lose it forever. You don't want bits of stuff going down here. I know there's a bit of rust in there already, but. All big lumps of stuff. But to be honest, this is fairly clean already. Um, if I put too much in, I won't be able to scrape around it, will I? So, if I actually put a bit of splurge and shave if I'm on that, it might sort of just stick in there. Yeah, that might work. Look. Yeah, top one. I've been at this for about half an hour now. Um, pretty good. Um, the shaving foam is quite good as a lubricant actually for the scraper. Uh, I've just been using a cut down scraper as well. I've also cut it down in length so there's a, a kind of harder edge there. Um, 
Yeah, so I mean the important bits for each for the cylinder compression, if you like, are these areas around here, like that. But then of course you've still got to seal all the water channels, so basically all of it's important. The only area was a bit of rust, you can see there's a bit of rust here. A little bit of very fine pitting. A little bit there, you see. That's a bit of that looks, still looks like gasket there. Here, here, here. Um, not too much pitting around the studs, so that's good. So I'm reasonably pleased with it. Um, so there's a bit of it's not, not too, a little bit of nasty around there as well. So I'm going to try um, this stuff now and see how that goes. I've also got, I haven't used the Scotch Bright pads yet. Um, so try these sort of areas, just have a go here. Uh, this might be pitting or is it gasket? I'm not sure. But I mean, round the round each um, cylinder and valves, they're all good. So that's good to see. And this, the bottom end is a lot better than the top. Obviously, a bit of water, so obviously collect sat in here, isn't it, or something? Um, but yeah, not fairly pleased. shop vac technique worked really well getting the shaving foam out of all these holes that was no problem um just looking at these valves I'm trying to shine a light on it so you can see that one see that one in the middle there that's got ford stamped on it it's also got three little dimples that have been punched in go to this one it's got two dimples punched in it uh this Get the light right. That one you can see it's got, I think it's a, hmm, about five, and then that one's got, that's got six or seven in it. So, are they factory markings, or has someone worked on this engine, or at least uh, done something to the valves? Because um, they've obviously been punched, so they know what order to put them in. So was, was that a factory thing, or was that something that's been done more recently? I've been interested to know from anybody that knows more about these engines than I do. But it's all looking pretty good. Um, the bores are lovely and smooth. Um, there is a slight lip at the top. You can feel it. Um, but then I suppose that's to be expected. They're all, they're all similar, actually. That one, yeah, pretty even um well there you go so now i've got to do the same thing to the cylinder head right well i've got all the holes plugged with shaving foam so now i've given it one serve a quick scrape you can see there's quite a lot of goo bits of gasket along there mixed with a bit of rust here it's not too bad so i'm going to try the goo gone uh and see how i get on with that so that's pretty clean. I um, I didn't want to, but in some places I've used a blade from a, a Stanley knife. There's a Stanley knife, extra blades in the handle. Um, what I've done is I've held it like that, but I'm hardly pressing at all because I don't want to dig it into the metal. So as it so you just go like that, and as you hit a raised spot, it just shaves it off. I mean, so it's sort of like this. I'm not, not really pressing hard at all. It just takes it off, so um, that's pretty good. Um, I might flush this out with water, actually. I've got these test tube brushes somewhere. No, I've got these these brushes and might um, just round them down the holes and make sure there's any loose rust comes up. So anyway today I'm going to do something a lot more interesting. Um, I'm going to put the cylinder head back on. I've got solid copper gasket. I've got hardened steel 
washers. You don't have to use those. I've been on the forums. Some people say they're a good idea. They're certainly a good idea for aluminium heads, which this isn't. Um, but we'll see. Um, you know, some people say it helps spread the load of the nuts slightly, slightly helps prevent cracking. I don't know, it's probably garbage, but anyway, I bought some. Um, they eventually arrived from the other side of the world. I've got this special copper gasket cement. You spray it on both sides of the gasket. You leave it five to 10 minutes to go tacky. And then you assemble your head. I've gone onto the web. I found the sequence, tightening sequence for the nuts. So you basically, basically you start in the middle and kind of go around like that. And you're doing the steps. So you go to 10 foot pounds, 20, 30, 40, and then 55. The recommended torque is between 50 and 60 foot pounds. For aluminium heads, it's a bit lower. I think it's 45, but don't quote me on that. Um, so 55 is a generally agreed middle torque for cast iron heads. Um, you're then meant to run the engine, warm it up, let it cool down again, retorque everything, do that at least three times. This is my copper gasket. It's actually copper faced. There's a copper facing each side and then there's some kind of composite between the two. But, you know, I'm not complaining. Um, and then there's, yeah, and then there's a kind of strengthening extra copper here, look, where it's really got to make a, a good seal. See here. So, oh yeah, it's genuine Ford power as well. It was sold as new old stock, so I don't know how old it is. Uh, who knows? Anyway, looks like it might do the job. So I've got to hang that from a hook and then spray both sides and wait five to ten minutes or until it goes tacky. And I've cleaned this head and I'm sending the head of the car, the block, with acetone just to get it absolutely grease free. There we are. And the studs. And I've gone over it with the shop vac as well just to get any kind of dust or anything out that I can. Same with all these holes. So find a hook time now and then spray that. There's a thin coat both sides so that's exactly what I've done I don't want to put it on too thick I don't want to start it running otherwise uh, that's probably going to be bad so let's time five minutes to put my greasy fingerprints on the flat mating surfaces here. Right. right, well, I'm not going to use the hardened steel washers after all that, even though I waited weeks for them to come, because if I use them, I won't, the nut won't 
uh, all the threads here won't go into the nut if you know what I mean it'll raise the nut up um, it just seems to me you know this is how it's done from the factory so let's let's do that so I'll put all these on hand tight and then start the talking process Right, I appreciate some people might not know what a torque wrench is. A torque wrench looks like a wrench, but it's got a handle on this end that you can rotate with sort of markings on it. And you can see here, that's Newton meters. Oh, hang on. That's Newton meters. This is in foot pounds. So that means a pound of force applied a foot from the point where you're rotating it. So actually it will be about a pound applied there sideways. So it's like a measure of turning force. So we need to, to um, tighten ours up to 55, which is about here. Sorry, it's about here. If you can hear me over the bird. So what you do is you twist this in till the scale reads the torque that you want and then you lock it with this locking nut here but to begin with I'm only, we're only going to go for 10 so the scale starts at 22.1 there there see that so I'm actually going to back it off a whole turn so that's about 10 to be so here we go again one It's going about, I don't know, tenth of a turn, eighth of a turn, more. Okay, right, there we go, 55.